welcome back to my guest room. The last time we were in my guest room slash home office, I basically duped a mid-century modern color block desk with a desk that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $85. I also picked up this rug off Facebook Marketplace before I found the desk. So I picked out some of the colors of it that I really wanted to incorporate in the room. And I kind of came up with this muted earthy palette of like blues, greens, creams, and any other variation of that. And I wanted to add them to the desk to kind of make it this cohesive little center to be my official home office. And I really feel like the color blocking paint really made it feel like a vintage piece. And also the green top of the desk kind of reflects the outside, which is exactly what I wanted to do was bring in some of that greenery. So I have tons more to get done in this room. So let's get started and let me show you what I'm working with. I want this space to feel accommodating and warm for when guests stay over, but the primary use of this room is to be my day-to-day -day home office. So I didn't want the bed to be the primary focus or take up most of the space. I also just don't want this room to be simply functional. I want it to stand on its own as a really well-designed space for work, rest, and enjoyment, and something that creatively inspires me. So according to my Pinterest board, I also want to bring in some primary colors as like little accents and pops of color. So I DIY'd this little stool. It was really simple. And I feel like this looks like a little custom side table that feels kind of mid-century. So I'm really into this. And then I also actually DIY'd this clock here and kind of made it look like a Joseph Albers artwork. And then above the bed here, I actually added a really cool clock. I don't know if I need two clocks in here, but I'm just adding it to kind of bring in this like primary pops of color. And then I also showed you this lamp here that I picked up from Ikea that's really yellow. And I kind of like it on top of the record player. I really didn't have anything here before. So bringing in the record player from the living room actually kind of has added something to this space in a lot of ways. I'm also gonna have to do something about this window. I mean, first of all, for privacy, because all we have is this, and these are just unattractive. And then I really want to fix this. Unfortunately, the guys who replaced the windows totally scraped them up, and it's kind of up to us to fix it if we want. So that doesn't sound too fun, but I will eventually get around to that in this video or maybe another video. But while we're in this corner here, I wanna show you this pole I got. Basically, this is from Home Depot. It's like a curtain rod, and I cut it myself when I was there. I cut it to like seven feet because I want to have a curtain rod here. I didn't show you these in my last video because I couldn't find them, but I got these curtains in the as is section for $14 and they're just like a really pretty sheer sage green and I think it would be great over the window. It's not going to block out the light, but it will give us some privacy from those two windows over there. So I found these on Etsy and I want to use them as brackets up here with like a wood pole. So I just need to cut this down to size and stain it and then see how much space I need up here. So I showed you guys this last time, this day bed is from Ikea and I picked up this blanket from Ikea and I like bringing like the red from over here over to the bed area. And I also picked up these two pillows and these three pillows from Ikea. And this is from Ikea as well. I love this. I feel like it adds to like that office-y geometric pattern, but it's still really neutral and cozy. And then here, I love these pillows. I think they really bring some fun in here. I just don't want to put anything maybe above this bed if someone's going to be sleeping there just in case we had an earthquake or something and the bed kind of pulls out here and basically stops right in the middle of there so it won't be a big deal if they were kind of like sleeping over on this side i also wanted to figure out something for this area i really need a side table for guests to have like a little lamp somewhere to put their keys and stuff like that and i did find a piece at an estate sale that i think might work there so i don't know if you guys remember this little guy but i thought i would pick it up just in case i could use it for something and then i was like oh my Oh my god maybe i could just use it in here i'm not sure like what orientation to put it at maybe maybe this i mean this is not super helpful as it goes into the door but kind of looks better like that I think it just adds a lot to this area and makes the bed feel a little bit more grounded. And then I also found this cute little lamp for $5. This totally matches the vibe of the room that I'm going for and also mimics the lamp on the desk. I don't know if it's like too redundant, but in a way I kind of like that it's redundant. 
I love it. It's so cute. And then people could like put their stuff down below here and they could also like charge their phone and rest it on the table. I think this is kind of like meant to be actually. It fits perfectly. I just really want to change out this light switch cover though. So I found this really cute one on Etsy as well. And I kind of think it's fun and I don't want it to feel too serious in here. There are some heavy pieces of furniture. So I feel like this is kind of nice. And I always feel like changing out a light switch cover or a plug plate cover really just enhances the space a lot. I found these at a thrift store for like maybe three bucks for four of them. And I think having one of these right here would be kind of cute and just make it feel a little bit more elevated. shocked with the difference that these knobs made. I was really overwhelmed with this bed because I didn't want it to look like Ikea, but I feel like it's really blending into the room with just the change of the knobs. And these only cost me $3 at a thrift store. So before to the right here, I had a dresser, but I just picked this up on Facebook Marketplace and I am obsessed with this. I feel like this totally adds so much to the room. I love that it's filling up the wall here and the dresser just wasn't doing that. So I think this is going to be awesome. It is so heavy and it was a hassle to get it here, but I really love it. It's just got like so much storage space and I'm going to be able to store all of my office supplies in here. And then I've already put my, my printer in there and some duvet covers, but I think this just really fills out the wall. I feel like this room really needed something to ground it because the desk and the rug are really center and they take a lot of attention, but then this wall just felt really blank. So now that this unit is here, I think it's just gonna look awesome and it's just gonna bring in all of that texture that I was looking for through books or different lamps and artwork. So I can't wait to decorate this. And I think it looks really good with the record player here as well. It just kind of brings the wood up. So after picking up this piece, I got really inspired and finally wanted to pick up something that I've always been thinking about. It's this Ikea Fado globe light and I absolutely love it. I think it's got the coolest mid-century vibe. It's in tons of like my Pinterest inspo photos and I think it just gives like a really nice glow to this room and I don't want this room to have harsh lighting like at all because first of all, it's a bedroom and second of all, it's an office. I love all the natural daylight in here and I've never liked harsh lighting in an office. It's uncomfortable, it makes me not wanna work and I think just having like a soft glow with a bunch of really cool lamps in here is exactly the goal. So I thought that I could use this lamp to replicate one of the lamps that I showed you in my Palm Springs antiquing video. And I've seen this before in other versions and I don't know if it's exactly gonna work, but I think it'll give the same essence for like, way less of a price. So this is $29 at Ikea and this was $3 at a thrift store. It's a tin tissue box cover and the color is kind of like blue and it's got some marbling on it. And I thought I could kind of make a pedestal for it. I also have this tissue box cover that I use in all my other rooms. It's from the Threshold collection at Target for like $15, which is kind of unnecessary. But if I was to go out and buy wood, it would probably cost me $15 to DIY this. So I kind of wanted to use this one one just because it's color and it's metal and different. I'm thinking of putting it right here in this nook because it's kind of an odd space and it feels like it would fit it perfectly, but I really want to move this unit over because I want to hide the plugs over here. It looks like it's just too small and I wanted to put the light on the inside so that it would come through and put the bulb on the top and like glue it so it was secure. However, neither of these boxes would be able to fit the bulb underneath. So I'm kind of bummed, but I love the wood one. I think it just looks super chic and high end and it totally replicates that light that I saw at that antique market in Palm Springs. Okay, I love this. This looks really, really cool. I feel like it would look nice in this corner too, just because it would give it more light, but this is really fun. Maybe eventually I will DIY my own version so that it does fit and it's like a full on sculptural piece all the time, but I love this so far. So the next thing I got from Ikea that I didn't share with you last time because I completely forgot are these tins. I guess they're called the Plog Farah tins. There's two of them, so one smaller one 
on the inside. And I thought that these would look great in this room because they're super neutral and they kind of just have that like industrial office vibe. I can hide all my papers in here and I don't have to put a full on like filing cabinet in here because I try to get rid of that stuff anyways. Also this Dracaena up here is probably one of my favorite plants. It's really angular and fun. It fits well in this type of space, but the cats love it and it's really toxic. So this is the best place I can put it and it's out of the way. And I kind of just add some plant life to this room. I've also got this really pretty green vase. It's ceramic and I just love the shape of it. So I was thinking of maybe putting some ceramics up here that I really like that are a little bit more angular and kind of sculptural. And then this is a lighter I got from a mid-century auction and I need to fill it with lighter fluid, but you light like this. And I think this would just be fun to mimic the two globes here. Or I could replace this with this cool vintage card box I got from the Long Beach flea market. I really like the color and the patina on it. And I also like that on the inside, it's got these alphabetical organizers. I was thinking about using this as a recipe box or like an idea organizer. And I found this shark tooth ashtray at the same auction that I got the little chrome lighter. And I really want to showcase it because it's just super fun. And I kind of like beach vibes anyways. So this really adds to the vibe I'm going for here. Okay, so I'm gonna revisit this a bit later. I'm loving this cabinet so much. I do want to address the light in here though. So this light is original to the home and I really love it. It's really, really pretty and ornate. I just don't think it's like matching the vibe that I'm going for. And I've always really wanted a rice paper lantern or like a Noguchi lamp. And I haven't found anything that's the right shape or color because I really don't like the white rice paper lanterns. They just kind of feel basic, I guess. And I found these ones on Amazon and it comes in a pack of two and you get these like more um, oblong dome shaped kind of ones that I really like a lot but they are still in the regular white paper style so what I want to do is see if I can antique the white here I did this in like my Halloween DIY video I sprayed some white gauze with some coffee water and it totally browned it up and made it look a little bit old so I think doing that to this might make it look like a vintage lamp and just add some more depth and interest to the room so let's try that out <laughs> So we haven't really been in my kitchen yet and that's a whole other project for another day because it's a lot of work. However, I made myself a shot of espresso with my new espresso glasses that I got at the estate sale as well. And I'm going to use half of this for my coffee water to stain the paper lantern. <laughs> So I just used a drop cloth and a pizza tin for this and then basically just sprayed it down in the sunshine. I wanted to make sure it was sunny out and warm out so that it would dry in the heat. And basically I'm just saturating it and then letting it sit and looking at it and then saturating it again. I was also looking for any kind of pooling or dripping because I didn't want that to dry. So I would just rub those away so it looked really even. And if you wanna do this yourself at home, just make sure to be careful as the paper can be delicate when it gets wet. <laughs> So while I'm out here and letting that lantern just dry in the sun, hopefully it'll give me that unbleached effect that I'm looking for. I thought I would do a backyard tour. So if you're seeing this now, you probably already saw the backyard tour, but back to this makeover, I thought I might as well cut this pole for the curtain rod. This is just a regular normal wood dowel I got from Home Depot. It was like $2.30 a foot. I think I only need like 63 or 65, so it'd be safe. I'm gonna cut it at 65 and then we'll stain it and let that dry outside and use it as our curtain rod in the guest room. So I got this little miter box from Lowe's, I believe, and it was pretty affordable and you can just put anything in here and then tighten it and either go at an angle or you can cut it down the middle like I'm doing. The miter box has a groove so you can just saw right into it. So I just measured my 65 inches to be in the center. And then I took some 80 grit sandpaper and really sanded this down as it's really raw wood and it was kind of rough and it would be hard for the curtains to slide back and forth on it if it wasn't smooth. I also wanted the ends to look a little bit more rounded so I just 
sanded those a little bit more. And then I picked up this stain from Home Depot. It's like a golden oak and I really love it. I think this is like my favorite stain now. <laughs> So I'm pretty surprised I randomly picked this stain and I feel like it looks a lot like the brackets that I picked out from Etsy. Compared to how this used to look, I think this looks great. So we'll just let this dry outside with the lantern. This is almost identical to the brackets here. I love these and they're gonna be really easy to put up, I believe. So with these brackets, you basically just take a screw, put it into the wall and then you slide on the bracket and it hangs like so. And then this you screw down to actually just hold the pole in place. I'm absolutely obsessed with the curtains here and I think the coloring is great, but I think this room just needs some more structure. And so I'm thinking I might want to fold this over and kind of hem it a bit so that it feels a little bit more, like I said, structured. So I'm probably gonna address that tomorrow. And then here is one of the original white paper lanterns that came in the package. And here is the one that we stained. The cream color is just so much better. It feels like it's vintage, like it's an actual, you know, higher end paper lantern. And I really, really am loving it compared to the white one. You can see how basic this one looks. And I'm just going to use it with this Ikea lighting kit. It's the Hema one. Basically it just comes with this cord here and this little dome that connects to the ceiling and this little plate. And I just have to connect the wires properly. So I'll have to work on that, but I'm really excited to see what this looks like. And I'm really happy with the result. this light so much. I think this looks awesome. I had a hard time figuring it out because of how the plates are installed in this ceiling. Old houses are like really difficult so didn't document that probably really well but I just think the warm white in here looks so much better than this like basic white here and I think this looks really really good. I'm actually really shocked with how good it looks. I'm just gonna catch up with you guys though tomorrow because it's quite dark outside and we'll finish this room. <music> Alrighty, it's the next day, but it is gloomy again. So it's a little bit low light in here. I'm sorry about that. I was looking at this bookcase while trying to kind of like style it. And I wasn't really sure about the knobs. I wasn't sure about them since I picked it up, but I was like, I can always change them. And I've kind of gotten used to them. I like how like low key and minimal they are. They're very mid-century, but I was like impulsively going on Facebook Marketplace looking at knobs. And I found these this morning and I feel like they match the color of the wood here. So they would still kind of blend in versus is doing something like a bright yellow or a white knob. This is though similar to the knobs on the desk and the bed and not that that's a problem. And I guess it's kind of a cohesion in the room. It's tying everything together. And I think also adding in the round stuff is also helping break up all the squareness in this room. This room's very square, the furniture's square. So adding these softer touches is helpful. So I want you to let me know in the comments what you think. I'm gonna try this one out for a little bit and just sit with it. And then I'm going to keep these on here for a little bit more and see what I'm feeling. So I recently discovered this stitch witchery tape. It's pretty cheap on Amazon and basically you can use it instead of hemming with a sewing machine. I really haven't figured out sewing yet and haven't spent too much time practicing it. So I wanted to hem these curtains, but I wanted to do it easily. So the instructions on here say that you just roll out the tape, put it between your two pieces of fabric, use a damp towel, and then turn your iron on the wool setting and just lightly steam for 10 seconds across the towel without dragging it. So you have to pick it up to move it. That's pretty much it. I held the iron on top of the towel for about maybe two seconds and then moved it to the left, held it for two seconds and hit the steam button a few times and then moved to the left. And I never cut the piece of tape until I got to the very end of the hem. And then I just repeated this on the other curtain and this probably took me in total like maybe 20 minutes. 
I'm really impressed with how this turned out. You can barely see the hem down here and it just looks a lot cleaner and a little bit more maintained. And I'm really impressed with that product. I've never used it before, but it was really easy to use. So I almost forgot in the middle of all this that I had a haircut. So I have different hair now, um, but we're nearing the end here. I really just want to address my pictures and kind of maybe a gallery wall or where to put up pictures in here. I have a few that I want to cut my own matting for and I got some from a local art store. This was about $14 and I found this really great photo on Etsy of the trailhead that we went to on our last trip to Palm Springs for only a couple dollars. So I got it printed at my local shop and put it in this frame. <laughs> And then I just need to find an area to store all of my camera equipment. I have it like in a little rolly cart. And then I just want some like wall storage and to put up some more of like my personal items. And then I think we're gonna be pretty much done here. So let's get into it. <laughs> We've had this pegboard from Ikea forever and I always wanted to use it and put it up somewhere just to have like things that are easy to grab like pencils and scissors and maybe batteries or something like that. And I thought it would be great to like put it on this wall right here just to bring over some of the wood tones that are really heavy on the other side of the room. And then we got these from like maybe Facebook Marketplace or something like that a while ago. So I wanna put these up together and maybe hang some of my sunglasses and glasses on here considering they usually just sit in a pile and get scratched. So I feel like this wall would have like a purpose after this was on there. So let's try it out and see what it looks like. like to wear hats a lot and I like to collect different ones and I thought it would be fun to kind of have like a little hat moment here. I've never really done something like that before. I thought it was kind of like not cool or not design worthy, but I don't know. It's worth trying out and it's a personal touch and I think having personal touches in your home is what makes it a home. So we're going to try it out. I got these hooks off Amazon. They're basically just hat hooks. They're like 10 bucks for a bunch of them and basically you just fold in the hat and then you put it under here. And this little thing catches the little button on top. And then you mount it on the wall like this. Let's take a look at what this place used to look like. so much. I think it's totally a representation of who I am and I haven't really put anything on this channel yet that feels like this personal. I really love my living room and dining room so much and they're very much in line with my taste but this room just feels like it is me. I love all the pops of color. It feels really creative and exciting to be in here and it's just such a vibe at nighttime. This kind of feels like it's going to be a second living space for me and it's definitely going to be a productive working environment but I think it also operates as a really good guest room. So I think we kind of achieved the multi-purpose room effect. And I'm just like super impressed with how it turned out. And I think everyone who comes and stays is gonna really love it. I really like the kind of cluttered but organized look of all of my books and magazines and the glasses on the wall, as well as all of the little things that inspire me and just remind me of what makes me happy. I love the artwork. I've been meaning to frame this one behind me forever. I love all the, like the primary colors. And I think it's just kind of relaxing, but also like energizing 
organizing and creative at the same time. And this room was really done on a massive budget and has been really curated for quite some time. I had to spend time looking for secondhand pieces like the daybed and this unit on Facebook Marketplace. I found that chair in the trash and totally revamped it, as well as the stool that's right next to it and the little side table. I also found the rug and the record cabinet on Facebook Marketplace. So this place has been collected and curated for quite some time and it was all purchased affordably over time. So I'm really happy with how it's turned out and how it's come to be. I found a lot of this really interesting art on Etsy for a couple cents or a couple dollars as a digital download and just got it printed at one of my local photo shops and put it into frames that I found at thrift stores over the last few months or the last few years. And it turned out to be super affordable. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this room and definitely like this video if you enjoyed it. I'll be back next week with another one. I'm working on the patio makeover at the moment. Other than that, I will see you guys soon. Bye.